Hey guys and welcome to episode 12 of our Road to Glory and today is one of those uh, essentially content days and um, we're going to put all the content from the last week that just passed into one single video so you guys are going to see a bunch of SPCs, a bunch of objective rewards, so essentially a lot of packs and I'm actually gonna I guess give you guys a guide on how to make the most out of this like during the week and like in the week like without the weekend league and all that stuff so just during the week what to do with this like spare time. So one, obviously do all the objectives because, you know, it's free stuff, free cards, and, you know, it just fills up time. And, you know, it gets you points for division rivals or, like, squad battles and everything. So you get re rewards for that, too. But secondly, it's I'm going to insist you guys do a lot of the objectives. Not necessarily the player, like, the SBCs. They're not necessarily the player ones because those are quite expensive. But, like, the ones that give you, like, mega packs or, like, player packs or all that. Uh, for example, this week I did, I think, about six different SBCs. I did the Rule Breaker one, the FGS the UEFA marquee matchups, the marquee matchups, the no boundary one, I think, or maybe that was an objective. Uh, one of the silver star ones, those are also like objectives. Basically, I've been doing everything that's practically free from like untradeable cards that I could like throw into an SBC. And it's quite simple. A lot of these like um, easy, like smaller, I guess, SBCs just ask for like chemistry and specific like nation or league requirements. You don't usually have a rating requirement so it's not too too bad, you can just chuck in a couple silvers or like even like um, non, non rare golds. So those are like literally free packs because throughout the whole entire year, you're going to get a bunch of these SVCs. They're going to most of the time give you untradeable cards, which yes, sucks. At the same time, it doesn't necessarily um, help us because we don't make coins out of it, but you make value through a different means because those SVCs will give you cards that you can use into other ones until one day you'll pack something that goes straight into your first team and then that player can then you know be sold so that's essentially how you make your coins so what you're gonna see like this is what i've been doing since the start of um fifa and one of my players paul pogba we packed in an untradeable pack and he's sitting in my squad so that's one less position i have to invest in so this is how you essentially make a lot of i guess value not necessarily like liquidity through coins but through club value and i think it's as important if not more important but yeah so in this um episode i think we open around 20 packs maybe uh, nothing really special, nothing special from the Mukieli, um SBC objective card, pack rewards, nothing, the other SBCs, nothing. Except I think our best player was UCL Rare uh, Savage, for like 85 rated, so like not even 10k. In the end, like, you know, it doesn't matter, you're not always gonna pack something good, so, you know, heads up, keep trying, you know, your pack luck is not insane every week like if every single video was like episode 8, I would probably be able to afford like icons everywhere. But yeah, so this episode, I essentially put together all the packs, just, you know, pack after pack after pack. I threw in the occasional SBC so you guys can, I guess, see how um, I do my SBCs. I usually end up buying one, maybe two players to, like, plug in a single, like, position for chemistry. Because usually they ask for high chemistry, like 80 and 85, and it's quite annoying since this is not a pay-to-win account. And I'm not, like, opening the tons of packs. And um, every time I open a pack that's tradable, I sell it instantly because I need the coins. So my club is not that stacked. The only thing that I stacked up from like previous SBC. So this is why I, I do all of them because, you know, it's I just essentially rotate everything in my squad and they're not just sitting like, in my club. They're not just sitting there and, you know, doing nothing. This brings me to the next point. We also had Rivals, which we finished Gold 3 reward. This is just simply from the new system. Like while playing Foot Champs, I got Div, Div 4, like whatever, rank 3 or whatever. We did, we got like um, a couple packs, mega packs and like I think 30,000 coins. Which isn't bad, like, you know, it's, it's, it's good It's good income if we can get it every week. That plus squad battles maybe give us another 15k plus hopefully um, foot champ. So, like, I can probably make 60 to 70k, like, liquid coins instantly without counting packs. Which is pretty good, honestly. It's a good, like, decent income every week and, you know, you, you can use it, build it up and save up a lot of money. So, as you guys can see in this episode, I have about 128,000 coins at the time. And by the end of it, or maybe halfway through the episodes, I'll show you the player I invested in. Because... For me, early FIFA was a lot of trading, and then you're gonna see a lot of people that um, at the end of weekend league they're gonna just sell their teams because they need the coins to like you know invest in something else or like you know they want to try out different teams. But for me, I'm really happy with the squad I have. I'm gonna try learn how to play with these sets of players, and maybe if I upgrade like position by position, like not full squad rotations, unless you know we we, we like you know hit pull something amazing and we need to change up the whole entire team to fit them in. But yeah, so right now I'm really happy with my squad, so I don't need to sell it because um, I don't want to lose coins to taxes. I used um, the foot 
what is it, the footbin tracker, which is actually pretty useful. So it gets, um, gets like all the information on where cards sell and at what price level they sell at. And you can see the percentage in um, profit or loss that you made per card at the time of purchase. So I, I suggest you guys go do it. It's just footbin tracker. I also use the footbin market or even just footbin in general to look at player prices, which is really good. Honestly, makes things really, really well organized in my head and on the side. So I know where I'm standing. Essentially throughout the team, um, most players are still at the stable value of where I bought them. We lost maybe t a 10k, I think, on like Hazard or like Sun when we bought them because, you know, there was a small dip. But, you know, 10k is nothing when it's like 180k on the line for the player. But essentially, overall, we're in profit because Thomas Partey, we bought him before the inform and he's got the, the wants to watch upgrade. So it, he covers essentially everything, if not adds profit. So we're fine right now in, in value of the club. So I'm not planning on selling my team ever after we can link unless once like like I said it before unless we're changing a whole entire new score. This brings me to my next point. Who do I invest in with 120k? I'm not doing trading, I might flip once in a while, but I want to wait until possibly the end of this Halloween promo because I think I don't know or maybe yeah, because I think it might be a good time to pack like pull a couple rule breakers and you know invest in them because they're not really getting packed. It's quite hard to pack them. I don't know. The pack weight this year is kind of funny. For some reason, we had insane pack luck early on, and now we're literally drawing dead in packs that are better than the ones like we opened before, if that makes any sense. Like, you guys probably saw the packs we opened, like Pogba, Kante, Martial. Like, they're not as good as the ones we're opening now. Or if not, they're like nothing, you know, nothing like superior to what we're opening right now. So, like, I'm kind of confused as to why we've not packed, I guess, a walkout in like the last 40 packs, which have all been decent. But, you know, oh well, you know, you win some, you lose some. So, we keep moving on. So my next point is, um, who do I invest in? I was looking at a couple rule breakers, and this is a two week promo, so I wasn't sure if I wanted to invest in a couple of the first week cards. For example, Camera, the left back from, I think, Nice, is really, is a good player, but I'm not sure, he's like essentially the only competition for Ferlan Mendy. But if they release another player in that position, we never know. Ocampos is the only right winger that's decent. Really, there's not really good many good right wingers in the game. So he could be a good investment, but you know, week two they could release another promo with another right winger or right mid, and that kills Ocampos completely because he's got, I think, three star weak foot or three star skill. So it's not that great. So you see the problem is I want to see both teams before I invest in any of these players because I'm not in a position where I think I really need to gamble big, like to hit a big jackpot because I think we're comfortable coin wise and team wise, so we don't need to rush into anything. So instead of letting my coins just sit there, I decided to look at a couple ones to watches. These are, I think, one of my favorite cards to invest in or like just simply hold on to. I don't necessarily like gold cards because, you know, you essentially got to hope that they go out of packs with a team of the week. But then if they get another one, then like it's all kind of messed up. Whilst ones to watches, they don't really use, lose their value and they will always fluctuate whenever there's a game that's about to start or a game that's, you know, or like, or they play really well. So I decided to sign a player which I could also bring on in Weekend League. Right now in Weekend League, we bring on Williams, um, Huang Yichan, and Hakimi. Decent players as a whole, but I needed another super sub because Huang Yichan is good, but he wasn't really like as clinical as other players. So we bought once to watch Rodrigo. Now this guy's an absolute beast. Give him another inform. This card I think will double in price. And so it's, I think it's a solid investment. He won't necessarily get a lot of play time because Bamford's playing really well for Leeds. But I think he might just, you know, get that occasional amazing game and, you know, you might get lucky and get an upgrade. If not, he's still an amazing player to bring off the bench and he's solid for foot champs. My next point is, as you can see, at, by the end of the video, we also accumulate um, like foot champs rewards and all that. So we sell a bunch of stuff and we still have around 130k. I want to sign a potential CDM as a super sub. Because what if Pogba or Partey get injured? I don't have a super sub that I can bring on that fits that position. I can put Hakimi, but I don't. he doesn't have that strength, I think, or like that good of a pass for him to play CDM. So I needed to sign another player. I'm thinking of saving around 10 to 15 more K so that I can afford once to watch Allen. Now this is a really interesting card. Everton are playing really, really well. And I think he's gonna be key for them in the midfield, which is why I, I don't see this as a bad investment. I'm gonna invest in him even if he doesn't get too many upgrades. He's still very usable and a very viable sub to use. So these, these are essentially my things I'm gonna try to do within um, the next episode. Potentially before um, Weekend League, if prices drop, I might buy him and pick him up. But yeah, after that, we also completed the new Silver SBCs, the Silver Stars. I absolutely love this concept. Moise Keane, one of my, I guess, favorite signings in the last couple transfer windows for PSG. He's played really well so far, and in-game he's actually pretty good. 
Three star, three star, yes, not great, but you know, clinical target man type of striker, really good. You can play next to Vidra. That's what I end up doing um, for my silver challengers. I sold my whole team. I spent, I think, around 10k on a silver team because everybody's inflating their prices. But we built a pretty strong silver team that could essentially last us for a really long time for all the other objectives. So it's an, it's an investment I don't mind doing. 10k for me, for a silver team that I'm going to be using a lot for this achievement and all these objectives, is good enough for me. So we did the Moise Keen SBC, really simple, three games, I think eight goals or six assists, something like that. We also did the Silver Stars, which gave us a rare Mega Pack and a bunch of 75 plus rated packs. Like these rare Mega Packs are like what? I don't know the exact coin value, like 50k or something, but they're supposed to be good. We've not gotten anything out of these or the Premium Gold Packs. Like I don't know what, like the Premium Gold Player Packs, I don't know what's going on. I, I was hoping I'd be able to make enough coins to afford Allen, but we're still 10k short sub somehow with all these like amazing packs. But yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> Our pack luck's gone a little bit down the drain, but you know, you know, we move, we move, we, we prep for weekend league and all that. Um, so this brings me to the next point. For next weekend league, what do we aim at? I think we should not get ahead of ourselves. I think goal two is potentially achievable. There were a few games which I just wasn't in the mindset and I threw. I think goal two is achievable. But once again, we set the boundary at goal three. Silver one, goal three is what we'll be happy with. It's a scoreline that I'm, I guess, happy enough to settle with. We get decent packs, decent coins, and essentially allows us to keep going every week in, week out. And we're only going to keep growing. And hopefully we'll be able to pack good red picks, because yes, we only get two picks and three players, I think, per pick. Which is um, the difference between gold three and silver one, which is, okay, gold three should be our target. But this week we were re really unlucky with our picks. I mean, I'm not expecting to pull anything really good because red picks are always like notoriously bad and I'm only gonna get in three or six choices essentially. And yeah, this team of the week was not great. Like Joe Gomez would have been nice, you know, fits right into our team, but oh well, you know, <laughs> we can keep dreaming. But yeah, that's about it for this episode. Um, I'll keep you guys, um, you know, informed if we do any changes for the weekend league but our team's pretty solid we're changing a couple custom tactics we changed anthony martial on the 4231 instead of going deep like running behind the lines we changed him into a target man i like him to be a little closer because a lot of people play like two depth depth of two or depth of three and it's just really frustrating to try running behind where like he has no room to run so i think if he can sit between um, that defense and midfield line and you know cover some space is pretty useful you can play one twos with sun and use both of them like be more clinical but yeah that's about it for this episode guys um i hope you guys enjoyed it you know it's a lot of a lot of lot of content during the week yes i'm not going to be doing any player reviews but there's a lot of like bigger content creators you guys can go see for like player reviews and all that i'm just doing this for fun i'm an like average fifa player it's just you know so you guys can see how your fellow average players are doing in the game and yeah, it's all for fun, you know. I try to save all my packs for you guys so I can open in front of you guys and, you know, share the adventure with you guys. Yep, that's it, guys. Hope you guys stay safe and enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Good luck.